Everybody take a deep, everybody take a deep breath and just go. <sighs> resting in the Lord just feels so good. There's nothing like resting in the Lord. And yet, yet as good as it feels, we always get too busy to do it. Can I get a witness? As good as it feels, we always get too busy to rest and feel this, this peace we feel right now beyond understanding. Just resting and letting go and letting God have Giving God every care, every fear, every worry, every stress, every anxiety, every struggle, whatever it is, just rest. Because every time I walk, talk, pray, say, with Jesus, it's going to be all right. And we must burn that into your mind, burn that into your spirit. It's going to be all right. Every time I walk, talk, pray, say with Jesus, it's going to be all right. Be still. Be still. And know that I am God, says the word. Behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me, says the Lord. And when we remember that, when we remember that, there is no fear. Because there is no fear in God. And so we rest. Amen. Praise God. Amen, family. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Ah, it always feels so good to transition out of his presence. I always feels so good. Just You feel like you came out of a, a Holy Ghost jacuzzi. <laughs> we just came out of a Holy Ghost jacuzzi. Just relaxing for 45 minutes in God's presence and just let go. Let go and let God let God have it. Amen. 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 So glad I'm so thankful you guys were were with, working with me today. Today was a crazy day. Today well it actually started yesterday. The crazy day started yesterday. <laughs> but today was just an extension and the devil was working hard. And, 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 and it's actually it's actually both a praise report because this is day two. Day two of the season of Lent. Fasting and praying, day number two of 40. And right, right, I got to give this praise report. Now, remember I told you guys before we go into Kingdom Biz, last year, now this, so far right now, this is the book I told you guys to write down your prayers and your, your goals and your prayers every day. This is what size it is now for me. I started last December of 21. It's when I gave you guys the assignment to write down your prayers and your goals every day. Write the vision, make it plain, and write it, write it down, make it plain. So I have all these things, all these things every day, every day. It's now, it's now 300, 398 days of writing the prayer request. Now, some of these, some of these have turned yellow. And the yellow ones mean they have come to pass. The yellow markings mean of these 20 things on my list, six of them have come to pass. So what you're doing, every day you write it, every day you write it down, make it plain. You thank God for the victory over the things I write down. Every day you write down the victory. Now, two of these things, two of these things were strongholds that took four and a half months of a battle. Where the devil told me, the devil said, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Month after month, I just kept writing it down. Victory, victory. It kept saying, it's not going to happen. not going to happen. Write down, victory, victory, victory. All of a sudden, in the middle of the consecration fast, the mountain started changing. The unmoved mountain, the, moon, the mountain we thought couldn't be moved, in the middle of consecration fast, it started changing. Instead of being immovable, it started changing. And then, on the first day of Lent, yesterday, it completely fell. <laughs> the mountain we dealt with for four and a half months was shaken in the consecration fast. And then the first day of Lent, the mountain fell. And now it's one of my yellow things on the list. So I'm telling you guys, you got to take the time. If you haven't done it, don't feel guilty. If you haven't done it yet, 
write down your prayer request and thank God for them every day. Write your prayer request down every day and as you read it every day, thank God for the victory over this. Thank God for my healing. Thank God for my breakthrough. You write it down every day. Write it down every day because you see it every day. Write the vision, make it plain so that those who see it, those who see it will run with it. Every time you write it down, you see it and you think it and then eventually you attract it as a man thinks what as a man thinks so he is if you think victory over and over and over and guess what you eventually in god's time in god's time the victory comes because you're thinking victory healing breakthrough whatever it is whatever it is just don't fail to write it down make a plane so now of my of my 20 things on the list Six have come to pass. I don't worry about the when. Don't worry about the when. Just write down and thank God every day. Thank you, God, every day for my victory over this list. And you say and you speak list. You speak everything on the list every day. Cause you speak it. You hear it. You think it. Attract it. Speak it. Hear it. Think it. Attract it. Because you're becoming what the thing is you wrote down. And in God's time. It shall come to pass. But in order to keep the devil's mouth shut, in order to keep the devil's mouth shut, every time you write down the victory, every time you write down the victory, and you speak the victory, and you hear the victory, you shut the devil up. <laughs> every time you write the victory, you speak the victory, you hear the victory, and you think the victory, every day you shut the devil up. Because he's busy trying to tell you it's not going to happen. But he can't tell you it's not going to happen because every day you write it down, you speak it, you hear it, and you think it. Get thee behind me, Satan, in your face. This shall come to pass in Jesus' name. And that's why I gave you guys that assignment. If you haven't done it, start today. Today's a perfect time to start. This is the second day of Lent. So the next 40 days, as you, as you got your list, you already got your list. You already wrote down the things you want to be victorious over during the season of Lent. That's a good place to start. I think, matter of fact, last year, this thing started just before the January fast of 2022. So that started this just before the New Year's 2022. That's when this started. And so every day since then, I've been doing it every single day. So it doesn't matter how big the book gets. I just keep writing it. It may be 500 pages. It may be 500 pages by the time I get to all 20 things. It doesn't even matter because I'm just claiming victory every day. And we must claim the victory every day to keep the devil's mouth shut. Who's trying to, who's busy, too busy trying to tell you it's not going to happen. So every time you write it down, make it plain, you speak it, hear it, think it, guess what? You are rebuking the devil and he will what? Free, bleep, bleep, pshum. He's got to go. Because every time you speak it, hear it, think it, do it, and give it to the Lord, you are what? Drawing near to God, and God draws near to you. And that, that is why the devil's running. He's not running for you. He knows that every time you draw near to God, God draws near to you. And that's why he's fleeing. Not from you. Not from you. But from God's presence who comes over you every time you draw near to him and pray. And speak your prayers. Think it. Hear it. Do it. Every day. Amen. Amen. So I had to share now, 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 part two. <laughs> right after that victory, the devil got mad. I knew what happened. He immediately, what did he do? He immediately hit the appraisal bill. And that's why we're indoors right now. He immediately yesterday hit the appraisal bill. I was in the middle of, uh, I was in the middle of Hollywood, which is about uh, eight, ten, 10 miles away. He immediately hit the, the engine of the, of the appraisal bill. And right after we left the first day, right after fellowship yesterday, he hit the appraisal bill because the miracle of the mountain moving happened right during fellowship. Right after, right after we had fellowship on day one, that's when the mountain completely fell. It was in my email that the mountain completely fell. So on my way to take John to the doctor's office, the appraisal bill got hit in the engine. And so I'm dealing with that now. I'm dealing with that now. So we'll be indoors until I get the appraisal bill fixed. But we, I, we, we immediately knew what happened. We knew exactly what happened. The devil got mad because the mountain he thought was never going to move. It completely fell. And the victory is ours. 
So he thought, well, let me let me just hit them. Let me just shut them up. Let me shut that praise up. Let me hit the praise bill. And guess what? Where are we now? Where are we right now? Praising God. As we know this fellowship, we know this fellowship. They hit the channel. They hit the they hacked the channel twice. They try to mess with the connection. They hit the praise bill twice. And guess what? And we're still praising. We're still praising our way through, and we still praise our way to the victory over all the things we're going through. So we never get up. We never stop praying. We never stop praising. And never stop standing still. Praise, pray, stand still. Word of God. Praise, pray, stand still. Word of God. So I had to share that with you guys. That that was a major thing. No no coincidence. No coincidence that both things with a mountain that moved both happened during fasting and praying. That's no. That's that's what's special. They both happen during fasting and praying. So don't tell me it doesn't work. When you increase your prayer time, things move in the things move in the spirit. When you increase time doing fasting and praying, things will move in different ways. So you write that down. The reason you also write down during the fasting, as you write down your goals and prayers, you also write down. The things that change, like on my list, the, change, the things change to a yellow mark. And a yellow mark meant it changed to a victory. The challenge changed to a victory. So your list is what you're going to pray over. But as things change on your list, make it a different color to let you know, oh, victory on that one. Victory on, in your face, devil. Victory in your face, devil. Victory. And as you continue to change your list to yellow or whatever color you pick, it reminds you that you're getting victories each day as you keep doing this. So I encourage you, I, I encourage you to make sure you do that during this season of Lent. We just started now, day two. So <clears throat> now you got your list down, you got your list down, and now just start, start watching, just watch God. Amen, family. Amen, amen. Uh, Kingdom Biz, Kingdom Biz, Kingdom Biz Thursday. Kingdom Biz Thursday. Amen. Amen, Glenda. Amen. He's always moving. God never stops moving. Even when we don't we don't see it moving, he's always moving. He never stops moving. We just don't, we don't see it. We don't see it. And that's where your faith comes in. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing by the word of God. And we walk by what? Walk by faith, not by sight. We don't see God moving sometimes, but he's moving. So we walk by faith, not by sight. Because God is always moving. Amen. Amen. Now, as always, Kingdom Biz is always based on Monday and Tuesday's lesson. And Kingdom Biz this week, let's go back to Monday and Tuesday here, my, my notes here. Monday and Tuesday this week, uh, Monday was, oh, Monday was removing the scales from our eyes. I give you 10 things, the ways the scales can, can block your sight spiritually. That was Monday's lesson. Tuesday's lesson, Tuesday's lesson was ready and armed for battle. No matter what we face in life, no matter the blind side, no matter what the devil does, we're always armed and ready for battle because we always stay prayed up. Even if you're not fasting and praying, always stay prayed up. That should be a lifestyle now. We should be praying, praising, stand still the word of God every day. Not just fasting and praying. That should be a lifestyle every day, in season and out of season. Pray, pray, stand still the word of God every day. Now, so... Kingdom Biz is all now. Kingdom Biz is when, of course, you get to share your testimony about the question I'm going to ask you right now about the two lessons on Monday and Tuesday. Now, Monday was about the scales on your eyes, and Tuesday is ready at armed for battle. Now, you can answer either, either one. The question I'm going to ask you the question is when have you felt you had any kind of the scales we talked about? And to try to block your eyes spiritually. Now, the, the, we talked about uh, the ten scales were the ten scales were your past, regret, failure, doubt, fear, the fear of change, disconnection with God, the world pulls you away, sin, and attacks. Those are ten things that can block your eyes spiritually to make you walk in fear and disconnect from God. So my question is, in your sharing day, to testimony day, as we share, is what what attempts or scales spiritually have tried to block your connection with the Lord, and how did you deal with that? And sometimes you don't even know it. Sometimes you you don't even know 
there's a skill affecting your walk with God. With God, until I give the list, and you say, "Man, you know what? I have been walking in guilt. I have been walking in unforgiveness of myself." Sometimes we don't even realize we're walking with a scale, because the first scale is so thin you don't see it, but there is a scale there. A second scale comes, a third scale, a fourth scale, and then all of a sudden you can't see. But the first skill is always very very subtle. And, and when you do a self-check, as I did the lesson, when you do a self-check and ask yourself, what scale spiritually is blocking my walk? What scale in my life is trying to take me away from God? And when you identify that scale, you're able to rebuke it and bind it and cast it out of your life. Once you recognize it, I say this all the time, once you recognize what it is, trying to pull you away from God, you can then rebuke it, bind it, and then cast that thing back to the pit of hell from which it came. Amen? So that's the question. What scale or challenge have you felt you've been struggling with? And that may be on your list. That may be on your list right now for the next 40 days. Usually, that's the usually that's number one on your list. The thing that refuses to let go. Amen. A snurks. Uh, past, past regret, and failure are yours. I completely surrendered all, so it is finished. Amen. Past the, the past, regret, and failure, and then you you completely surrendered and gave it to the Lord, and so it's finished. Exactly right. Once you give it to the Lord, thank you, snurks. Once you give it to the Lord and you let go, key word, let go. You can give you can give the Lord. You can give it to the Lord, but if you take it back, if you take it back. If you take it back, you didn't let it go. Hey, Brother Mike, you didn't let it go if you take it back. So when you give it, Lord, let go and trust him. It's going to be all right. Even if you don't see the answers, that, that, that testimony I told you, the testimony I just gave you, we saw no answers. All we saw is no, 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 no. For four and a half months, no, 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 and no, no, no. So when you hear no, no, no all the time, you keep saying yes, yes, yes in Jesus' name. Hey, Big Mike, Brother Mike, you keep saying yes, yes, yes. You keep saying yes, yes, yes. It doesn't matter how you feel. Keep saying yes, yes, yes. And even when you're broken, Brother Mike, even when you feel broken, you keep praising in whatever I have learned and whatever state to be content. Even when you're broken, you say, thank you, Jesus. See, you could, when you're broken, when you're broken, you could give in to negativity and depression and suicide. That's giving into it. But when you feel broken, you might, you might just break into tears. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And you break down in tears. Thank you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. And there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. If you if you know no scripture, if you know no scripture, and you just sit there rocking, I need you, Jesus. Give me strength, Lord. Give me strength, Jesus. I need you right now. Help me, Jesus. And you just say, you might say it a hundred times. You might fall asleep saying it. Help me, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. And the more you say it, the more you say it. The more you feel his love in the middle of being broken, you your your mouth, your mouth is either either rebuking the brokenness or you're receiving it. Your mouth is even either receiving the brokenness or speaking against it. And it's not easy. It's not easy. Like I said before, even if you're in tears, even if you're in tears, help me, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give me strength. You're praying for strength. Bottom line. When you're broken, you're praying for strength. That's what you're praying for. Whatever it is, doesn't matter, doesn't matter what the brokenness is, whatever the brokenness is, you're praying for strength to not let go of God's unchanging hand, to give you strength to make it through the storm. The brokenness is a storm. The brokenness is a major storm. And you're praying for strength to make it through the storm. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And Psalm 30, verse 5, Psalm, I think it's Psalm of Proverbs, I think, I think it's Proverbs, I forget, John, it's Proverbs or Psalm, I think it's Proverbs 30, verse 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So you keep holding on to God's unchanging hand during the brokenness and just keep crying out to the Lord. He says, call me, Jeremiah 33, 3, call me, I'll answer you. We got to call him when you're in pain, when you're broken, call him. I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things that you'll know. 
when you're broken, you have no idea how to make it. You can't see anything but brokenness. So when you pray, and you're praising, and you're crying, Lord, show me, Lord, what to do. Lord, give me strength, Lord. I see no solutions. I see no way out, Lord. Give me strength, Lord. Open my eyes. Reveal to me, Lord, what to do. Reveal to me what to do. And as you're praying, as you're praying that, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit opens the door and gives you an idea, gives you a direction, a purpose, and you give strength because you feel that in the middle of the brokenness and you're crying in crocodile tears. You have no idea how to make it. But you say, thank you, Jesus, give me strength. Show me, Lord. Show me, Lord. Show me what to do, Lord. Tell me, Lord. Reveal to me, Lord. And you might fall asleep. You may fall asleep saying that. But remember, remember, if you fall asleep saying, help me, Lord, all night, all night your spirit is dealing with help me lord and you fall asleep thank you jesus give me strength and all night your spirit and subconscious mind is focused on give me strength and you wake up with strength because you sleep physically your mind and spirit never sleeps so when you go to sleep saying thank you jesus give me strength help me lord help me, help me lord and you wake up refreshed why are you refreshed? Because you went to sleep saying, help me, Lord. You went to sleep saying, give me strength. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. And all night, all night, your spirit's going, help me, Lord. Give me strength. All night, all night, you're meditating on, help me, Lord. Give me strength. And you're being refreshed all night. Hey, Justine, you're being refreshed all night. Because what you go to sleep on, what you go to sleep on, you're working on all night. The spirit and your subconscious mind work together and you wake up man i feel better this morning why because you went to bed calling to the lord and lord you drew near to god as you fell asleep and god drew near to you as you slept you went to sleep reaching for the lord and as you slept he drew near to you and gave you comfort and you slept good thank you john thank you Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And you hold on to that. Amen, Big Mike. Brother Mike, you hold on to that. And we hold on to it. When anybody, any of us, this goes for anybody. But I, I think Psalm, Psalm, yeah. one, Psalm 147 3. Psalm 147 3. He, he heals, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. That's Psalm 147 3. Memorize that when you're going through something. He heals. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. That means as he's healing you, not he's just healing you, but he's binding up the scars that are left by the pain, the scars left by brokenness, the scars. He heals the broken heart and binds up the wounds. And there's no time, Brother, Brother Mike, there's no time limit. You just keep crying to the Lord. Cry to the Lord and talk to him every night. You, I just said earlier, you pray until something happens. P-U-S-H. You pray until something happens. There is no time limit. No time limit. Don't even time it. You just keep praying. You keep praying every day. And next thing you know, all of a sudden, you feel better. That's all right. Hey, brother, I've been there. I, the, the fellowship knows I've been there where you are. And, and, and crying all night. Since some of you read my first poems, my poetry site, um, my, my, my depression poems, but the poems helped me make it through the night. I, I, I happen to be a poet too. And my poetry, my own poetry, was my own therapy because I'm a poet. But if you do spoken word, poetry, a journal, that's why a journal is so important. Write down how you feel in a journal. Write down in a journal how you feel. And guess what? As you write it, it's like, you, it's like you're talking to somebody. And you are. You're talking to somebody yourself to help you make it through it. That's the importance of the journal. Hey, Erica, the importance of the journal is to write down exactly how you feel. Write it down how you feel. And you feel like you're talking to somebody. And you are. You're talking to yourself to give yourself strength. It, it, says, it, says, it says, 
uh, uh, amen, brother, amen, brother, brother Mike. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I have to. I have to give. I. I give you my poetry site, brother, brother Mike, because there's some poems uh, hanging on, hanging on by a thread. I have some poems called "Hanging On by a Thread." It, it was. It was very. It was written in the midst of, of, of depression. It was, Lord, I'm hanging on by a thread. I'm paraphrasing. The poem basically said, "I'm hanging on by a thread, Lord. I know the word. I read the word, but I'm hanging on by a thread." And the one thread was a connection. The one thread I'm hanging on to is my connection with you, Lord. I'm very heavy. I feel very low, but I'm hanging on to you, Lord. I hang on, I'm hanging on. And that's what, that's what we do in the storm. That's what we do in the storm. Amen. So thank you, Brother Mike. Amen. 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 <laughs> See, amen, brother, brother Mike. Hey, brother Mike, make sure, make sure at the end of this lesson, make sure I get your email address. I'll share those poems with you. I can, I can minister to you further. So make sure by the end of this lesson, before you leave, leave your email address so I can actually contact you by email and share more with you. Amen. So I, this, this goes for everybody. Many of you have shared, many of you have shared in past lessons the challenges you face emotionally. Losses of family, uh, traumatic experiences in your youth, all kinds of things have hit us. All kinds of things have hit all of us, but we're still here. The one thing you must praise God for is we're all still here. We're all still here. And just the fact you're still here is a victory. So many people gave up and were suicidal thoughts, depression. They took their own life because they gave in to the heaviness. But the fact you're still here, the fact you're still here means you're still getting strength from the Lord to give you strength to make it. And this goes for everybody. This goes for everybody. This goes for everybody. Amen, Erica. Amen. We keep pressing. The word says, keep pressing for the mark, toward the mark. I press toward the mark. For the high calling. I press through the heaviness. I press through the struggle. I press through the attack, the blind side, the depression, the anxiety. I press through it. We got to press through it. And that's why we press. The word says press because something is pressing against us. And what is pressing against you? Heaviness, depression, anxiety, fear, depression, the past. Guilt, all that stuff we talked about on Monday, those are scales. Those scales we talked about Monday, that is what we're pressing through to be victorious over. The scales are the heaviness of things trying to pull us down. The weight of the, the things that weigh us down are the things of the heaviness trying to keep us down. But that's what we pray so much that's why we praise so much in this fellowship, to praise our way through, to praise our way to the victory over the heaviness we're going through. All of us are going through something. All of us are going through something. Believe me, all of us, not just you, us too. We get it big time because we're blessing you. We're, we're, we're in a major battle constantly because we're being a blessing to you guys. So devil, you know, he's definitely after us because we're trying to bless you. So he tries to hit the car, the channel, the he tries to hit everything. To try, he tries to do his best to disconnect this fellowship from the top by attacking us. So I believe me, I understand. I, we understand exactly what you're talking about. So most of these lessons, almost every every lesson I've taught, every lesson I've taught came from an experience, not a theory. Every lesson I've taught in this fellowship was lived first. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not teaching from theory. I'm teaching from the fact that God helped us make it through the storm. And those of you who've been with me for six years, we've had many storms. We've had many storms together as a fellowship, OG 1 through 3, 4, 5, 6. And now we're in year 7. So welcome to OG 7, Brother Mike, OG 7, and Carol, OG 7. Yes, the year, this is our seventh year, so if you join this year, you're automatically OG 7. So that's right, and we're still here. Amen, John. Amen, John. Amen, Brother Mike, just do what John just said. Amen. So, so when we share with each other, and that's why I'm glad you said it, Brother Mike, because, Brother Mike, because we're talking about how to deal with brokenness, a lot of people are broke. Uh, excuse me, give me a thumbs up, family, a th uh, fellowship. 
Give me a thumbs up right now if you understand what brokenness is. Fellowship, give me a thumbs up right now if you understand what brokenness feels like. Shame the devil to tell the truth. To let Brother Mike know he's not by himself. Everybody has been broken. Everybody has been broken at one time or another. And it is not, it is no, it is no good, it is no game. Making it through brokenness is no game. So we understand. We understand what it means to be broken. And that's why we come together as a fellowship. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Deanna. Amen, y'all. Thank you, thumbs up. Thank you, thumbs up. So you see, Brother Mike, you see, Brother Mike, all the thumbs up, Brother Mike, unless you understand we are not alone. We are all together. We're all in this together. And everybody is dealing with some kind of brokenness in some way. And we have to we have to keep on, keep on doing it, keep on doing it every day, keep on doing it every day to praise your way through it and press through it. Praise, pray, stand still, word of God. Praise, pray, stand still in God's presence and speak word of God over it. When you're depressed, use your authority. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke depression right now. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke negativity. In Jesus' name. That's what it means to use your authority against brokenness. When you feel depression, rebuke it. You feel anxiety, rebuke it. You feel fear, rebuke it. Don't receive it. As soon as you feel the heaviness, your prayer is, Father, in the name of Jesus, rebuke this attack on me right now. Name the unnamed, seen unseen. I rebuke every attack on my spirit right now. I rebuke every spirit of a heaviness, every spirit of darkness, every spirit trying to pull me down right now. Name the unnamed, seen unseen, and I cast you all back to pit of hell from which you all came. In Jesus' name. We're talking to everybody. We're talking to every spirit trying to bring you down. And that's where we come together in fellowship and we guys get to share. I'm glad you got to share that. So I'm glad uh, Brother Mike shared that. And I'm uh, Brother earlier, earlier, uh, uh, Brother Diana, no, Snurk, Snurk shared hers. So when we share, don't forget, when we share together like this, there are many people listening right now who are going through the same thing and are glad we talked about it. Amen. When we share together, someone's listening right now who didn't want to talk about it. But we have the nerve to talk about it right now, to share together, to cry together. You guys, you guys have been with me. You guys, are, you've seen me break down in tears on camera. My mother, the things I dealt the, the devil was trying to lie to me about my mother, tell me he's going to take my mother before 100 years. I just start talking about you guys. I broke down in tears right on camera. And the Lord said, don't, don't hide it. I was trying to, I'm trying to suck it in. The Holy Spirit says, don't hide it. People need people need to see what a man how a man deals with emotional pain. Just talk through it, so people can see what it, what it feels like when you're talking through the challenges you face in life, the challenge you face when emotional emotional pain hits you and however it hits you. So we've we've seen a lot of stuff together. We've seen a lot of stuff together in this stuff we talked about. Uh, Glenda, uh, some of the okay, wait, 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 you, some of us passed through, some have passed through, and some of us are in the beginning. Amen. Some have passed through it, and some are in the beginning. We're all in different levels. Amen, Glenda. We're all in different levels of the different attacks. But it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you are. We deal with every attack the same way. If, if in the beginning of the attack, in the middle, or the end, we do the same thing no matter where you are in the attack. You praise, you pray, stand still in God's presence, and speak to God, rebuke it. Every day. That's no matter what, no matter where you are, no matter where you are in the brokenness, beginning, middle, or end, you still praise, pray, stand still, word to God. Amen, Snurks. God collects our tears. There's actually a scripture. There is actually a scripture in in, in Psalm about that, Snurks. I saw it. I gotta I'll find it. There is a, a, a scripture in Psalm about how God deals with tears. And just I love the book of Psalm anyway, so there's so many great verses and great books in, in Psalm. So one of the things I always read when you're feeling down is just read the book of Psalms. Read the entire book. Because sometimes you just, the Holy Spirit, when you go through Psalm, the Holy Spirit will stop you on the right one you need to hear. 
Try it one. Try it one day. Just go through the book of Psalm and, and stop when the Holy Spirit says stop and read that chapter of that book. And it always makes sense to you at the time you stop. It doesn't matter when I read Psalms, when I stop, when the Holy Spirit says stop, the very book I read applies to me that moment I'm reading it. And it never fails. It never fails. So I, I encourage you, whenever you feel down, just go through the book of Psalms. And let, and let the Holy Spirit guide you which one to read. And you'll be refreshed as you read it, along with any other scriptures that you like. Amen. 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 Anybody else have something to share? Amen. So th these have been, this has been a great moment because this has been a great moment. Psalm 56, 8. Amen. 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 So, so let's see. As I told you guys last year, uh, 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 as I told you guys uh, uh, last year, you should write down your favorite 20 scriptures. Remember, you should write down your favorite, at least, at least your favorite 20 scriptures. So when you feel down, your favorite scriptures is the first thing you go to. The reason you take the time right now to write down at least 20 scriptures, at least or more. So when you feel down, you go straight to the 20 scriptures that make you feel good. Amen, Snurk. You got a book? Amen. That's that's what I told you guys. The prayer booklet is that for me. That's where the prayer booklet came from. I collected prayers over different ministries. And the prayer booklet we have right now is what I did to put together to get to keep myself focused. I was I was new I was, I was a baby Christian. So I, I gathered all these prayers together to read together to make myself stay focused in the Lord. When I first got saved, the devil attacked heavy. The devil attacked heavy when you first get saved. So I put together the prayer booklet to keep my mind stayed on him. And it takes about 45 minutes to read everything in the prayer booklet. So every day for about a year, every day for about a year, I read the entire prayer booklet every day to get my mind right, to get the world out. And I had to do it. It took one year of reading the entire prayer booklet every day to get my mind right, to get the world out in order to really understand the presence of the Lord, his presence and the word and being connected because it is a learning experience. It is a learning experience to stay connected every day, to hold your peace every day, connection to the Lord. Thou should keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Perfect peace, perfect peace whose mind is stayed on on him if you need perfect peace your mind must be stayed on him through what the word of god the scriptures the way to keep your mind stayed on him is reading the word of god and the more you read the word of god the more peace you feel when you especially especially when you're broken you may even you may you may be even depressed as you read it but guess what as you read it in depression, you feel better because your mind is thinking about the word and not depression. Listen closely. When you feel down and your reaction is not give in to depression, but to read the word of God, even when you're depressed, the next thing you know, you feel better because you're thinking word of God and not depression. As a man thinks, so he is. And faith comes by what? Hearing and hear the word of God. So as you read the word out loud, you hear it, and you hear it, you think about it, and all of a sudden, the depression starts lifting because the word of God is replacing the depression, the brokenness, and the heaviness. These are, I'm so glad we talked about these two things. Uh, Snurks' is very first one about the past and, and failure and the things we talked about there and, and Brother Mike brokenness. These four things we talked about that came up, that's what Kingdom Business is all about. You guys share a struggle and then we talk about it. So we talked about how to deal with brokenness, how to deal with the past. We talked about me lessons, how to keep the past in the past. And the regret and guilt, they must be put under your foot by the Spirit and stay under your foot. You didn't kill the old man. You didn't kill the memories. They still happen. And you can keep them under control by feeding the mind the Word of God every day. Amen. Amen, John. The regret of unrealized expectations. The, that's, a, that's a major regret. The regret 
of unrealized expectations. You expect people or expect certain reactions and they don't happen. We expect people, we expect things to happen and they don't happen the way we think they should and then we get upset because we expect, we expect people to act right and they don't. We expect somebody to act the right way and they don't. So the expectation is unfulfilled if they don't react the way we expect. And then we get upset because we're frustrated that they didn't fulfill the expectations. And that's hard. So what we have to do, and what we have to do, and when John and I, John and I have talked about it, that's when we have to let go. That's when you have to let go. See, I, I expected too much. People will always let you down, but God never will. People will always let you down, but God never will. And the problem is, we sometimes think we expect people to be on the same level of fulfillment as God, and they can't. They can't be fulfilled. God is perfect, and people are not. People will never be able to fulfill all the things we expect them to do because they are imperfect. So therefore, we, we can make things worse on ourselves because they can't do what we're expecting them to do. They don't even have the ability to do what we expect them to do. So when you understand that, there's no frustration because when they do it, you're surprised. So when you look at it that way and don't expect it and they come through, then it's a surprise. But when you expect them to do it and they don't come through, then we're upset because we expected too much of them beyond their capability. But when we just say, okay, okay, well, I, okay, well, I just said I'm, I'm doing this way. I did it. I did my part. Whatever they do, however they react, I did my part. And then when they come through, it's a surprise. Amen. Amen. Amen, Carol. I, I, as you as you saw, I always repeat Romans 8, 28. Every time we pray, that's part of our daily prayer time. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. That's right. Call and keep it perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. I say those carol about every day. That's almost in every lesson. Those two scriptures is in every lesson that we've ever done because those two scriptures are staples. Those two scriptures are staples. Amen, Jonah. We expect too much beyond their capability or character. We expect too much of people. We expect too much of others beyond their capability or character, like John said. So when we don't expect them, then when they come through, it's a surprise and pleasant. So we don't put the pressure on ourselves by expecting others to behave the way we want them to behave. We have no control over how they behave. We have no control over how they behave. Now, Glenda, it's like you hold the door for someone and they walk through and say, Nothing but <laughs> you hold the door for them and they say ouch instead of thank you. <laughs> like like you got in their way, open the door for them. you try to be polite, open the door, open the door for somebody, and instead of saying thank you, they say ouch and look at you like, what do you do that for? Why'd you open that door? And you're trying to be polite and open the door. Exactly, as per, as a good example. A good example. You expect them to say thank you, and instead they look at you like you're crazy for opening the door for them. And you get upset. I'm just trying to be polite. I'm just trying to be nice. And you don't even appreciate being nice. But that's a, like John said earlier, that is an unfulfilled expectation. They didn't say thank you. They said, ouch. You expected them to say thank you, but they didn't. They said, ouch, and got irritated when you expected them to say thank you. And that is a perfect example of a unfulfilled expectation. And that's the thing. That's what we have to make sure we don't expect people. We just know that people are imperfect. People are imperfect. So we say whatever it is, and we, we hope they come through, but we can't make them come through. You can't even make them come through. So when they don't react the way you expect, don't get upset. Don't get upset when they don't behave the way you expect, because they can't. They can't. 
So we expect too much of people by expecting them to be on the level of God never lets us down. And we, we unfortunately think that people will never let us down and people will always let us down. Because people are what? People are imperfect. So that's, as I get ready to close, as I close, this has been a great lesson. This has been a great uh, sharing as always. This is a great topic, uh, what we talked about today. Because a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people are dealing with the topic we talked about today. Brokenness, brokenness, regret, failure, and the past. Those four things we talked about today, a lot of people, a lot of people are dealing with those four things. Brokenness, the past, guilt and regret, and failure. And if we don't let go, if we don't let go, I say it every day. If you don't let go and give it to the Lord and pray and let God have it and then pray for God to take care of it. It's going to be all right to give to give it to the Lord and just say, thank you, Jesus. Take this cup, Lord. Take this cup from me, Lord. I give it all to you, Lord. I give it all to you right now. Father God, I give it all to you right now in Jesus' name and let go. And after you let go, just say, thank you, Jesus, for taking this cup. Thank you, Jesus, for taking this struggle. Thank you. Just thank him. Thank him as he takes it and you leave it in his hands. Don't take it back as you thank him and leave it in his hands. Not your hands. Thank him and leave it in his hands. And from that moment on, just thank him every day. From that moment on, just thank him every day. And you'll feel the peace of God come over you. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this great, great kingdom is, Lord. We thank you, Lord, as we come together every Thursday, Lord, to share to share and encourage each other to be strong with each other and pray for each other. Lord, right now, Lord, I pray over the fellowship right now, Lord. I pray both this intercessory prayer as well, Lord. I pray this corporate intercessory prayer right now over the entire fellowship right now, live archive, especially for those who heard this lesson. Lord, right now, Lord, I stand in agreement right now with every prayer request right now the any fellowship member right now is dealing with regarding this lesson i pray for strength for all those who are dealing with brokenness the past failure and regret lord give them strength right now lord give them supernatural strength to be able to walk through the storm of these challenges lord give them supernatural focus to stay focused on your word lord to be able to walk in victory over these challenges, trying to bring them down, Lord. Lord, right now I stand also in agreement with every unspoken prayer request that's on the heart of every fellowship member right now. I stand in agreement with prayers for family, prayers for healing, prayers for breakthrough, prayers for deliverance, prayers for whatever each person needs right now who can hear my voice. To be able to walk in victory over whatever they're going through right now in their life. We thank you, Lord, right now in advance for moving all the ways you're moving right now through and over this fellowship in Jesus' name. And Father God, as we continue to come together as a fellowship six days a week, Lord, daily, Lord, we pray for a supernatural hedge of protection to be over everybody. To protect us, Lord, for any hurt, harm, or danger from unexpected shootings, accidents, natural disasters, or violence of any kind, Lord. Daily, Lord, we pray for a supernatural healing over the pandemic, the variants, and every other disease, Lord. We pray for our leaders, Lord, for justice, for change. We pray, Lord, for you to continue to wave your mighty hand over the spirits of rebellion, division, racism, and hatred. As we commit, Lord, right now as a fellowship, we commit to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways, Lord. So you are here from heaven. Forgive our sins and heal, 
heal, heal our land. All these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Before we close this beautiful night of jazz, praise, and worship, and especially kingdom business, I always know someone's watching, maybe for the first time, or visiting for the first time, who doesn't understand why this fellowship is always on fire, coming together around the world, six days a week, live archive. Having never met physically, but knowing we all love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that makes us all brothers and sisters in Christ. So right now, I'm going into the closing prayers. Anything typed, as always, anything typed during the closing prayers is deleted. I respect for Holy Spirit. So please wait until after the closing prayers for any further comments. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to a person listening, and you've been here the whole time. And you heard the intense jazz praise. And you heard the stillness. And you heard the kingdom biz sharing and testimonies. But right now, you can't connect. Because right now, your life is falling apart. Worry, fear, stress, anxiety is all over you. Families turned away from you. Friends stab in the back. And you may even feel like giving up on life yourself right now. Yet somehow, you find yourself on this channel and you have no idea how you got here. That's because God brought you here. Because God sees what you're going through right now, physically, spiritually, emotionally. And that is why you're here. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back to sin. And now your life is falling apart because you went back into the devil's world. And now the devil is telling you, once you leave God or fail God, you can never go back. And that right there is a lie for the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you said the prayer of salvation, and then you fell back into sin, there's nothing the devil could do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life. Recommit your life to Christ. And there's nothing the devil could do to stop you. So right now, if you're a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, or right now your life is filled with depression, darkness, and hopelessness, or you just don't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, either way, I want you to pray with me right now. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. Right now, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without living up to you first. Create in me, O Lord, a clean heart. And remove from me anything and everything that's not like you in Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is right to receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to touch us, to guide us, and to also convict us when we're not walking God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life which is bringing darkness into your life. 
and then he'll tell you how to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day. Not just every Sunday, every day. Spend time with God every day. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh. Feed your faith, starve your doubt every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you'll feel in your life. Which is God letting you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. The next step is repent. And repent means to change your ways from sinful ways to God's ways. And the more time you spend with God every day, the stronger your spirit gets. And soon you'll turn away from the sinful things you used to do. And instead, seek God's will and God's way. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirit's retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named or unnamed, seen or unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. We cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our home out of our kids, out of our marriages, back to the pit of hell from which you all came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship unspeakable joy. Loose peace beyond understanding. Loose restoration, Lord. Restore, restore every area of our life, Lord. Loose reconciliation, Lord. Bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, please keep a hedge of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose a supernatural healing, physical, spiritual, emotional healing. By your stripes, we are healed. And Lord, we confess, Lord, we confess every day, I believe, I receive my healing. In Jesus' name, I believe I receive my healing in Jesus' name. Every day, confess it, thank Him. Confess it, thank Him. Every day, pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose a supernatural overflow, a financial breakthrough, a supernatural debt cancellation, Lord. Lord, let your blessing, Lord, your blessing of abundance, Lord, rain down, Lord, rain down on fellowship, air, financial need, whatever it is. For, for you, Lord, shall supply all our need according to your riches in glory. For Christ Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for anything. For the Lord is my shepherd. Let us say this part together, fellowship. Repeat after me. For I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I'm blessed going in and blessed going out. I'm blessed that I may be a blessing to others. I am out of debt. All my needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. I am a child of God and nothing shall by enemies hurt me or block my blessings in any way. In Jesus' name. And finally, Lord, finally, we thank you, Lord, for a miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle they're praying for right now. And now we know. Now we know every day we take time. We take time every day to visualize it, to see a miracle. See it every day. See it, believe it, and then receive it into your heart. And as you receive it into your heart, expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the exact when. But because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up, any day you wake up, could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. So expect your miracle every day. May the Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord set his face and divine approval upon you and give you peace. That you may be a blessing to everyone you touch or speak to, a blessing to everyone you pray over, a blessing to everyone you pass by, and bless when I open your mouth, because the love and light of the Lord is all over you 24 7, 365, including deep here. So, Father God, all these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask, in Jesus' name we pray. 
The fellowship say, Amen, Amen, Amen.